Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. In today's video, I am going to be discussing last night's game between the Indiana Pacers and the Toronto Raptors. However, before I get too far into it, I would like to remind you all to leave a like and subscribe. I've been appreciating all the support that I've been receiving lately, and I hope to see that continue. Now, without further ado, let's discuss the game. Now, this is a really solid win for the Raptors. Going into it, they were without Kyle Lowry and Pascal Siakam, so to come away with a win without your two leading scorers is definitely a nice victory to have, especially when it's over a playoff team like the Pacers. I think that the large reason why they won this game was from just the balanced scoring, but OG Ananobi really stepped up and had a really nice game for them, pouring in a career-high 30 points while also adding 8 rebounds, uh, shot 9 for 16 from the field, and got to the line 10 times. He knocked down 8 of those, piled up 5 steals as well, just a really nice, well-rounded game from OG. He got it started by knocking down some threes. I believe he had 3 in the first half quarter and was able to add one more later on in the game to finish out going four for six. He's much more of a catch and shoot guy at this point and that's really the one area of, area of his game where he could stand to improve which would be the off the dribble shooting but on catch and shoot shots he's already in the high 30s at this point and that is very valuable especially when your current profile and your current role is to be that off the ball 3 and D wing guy and he is able to play that very very well. Today, now since he had the ball in his hands a bit more with uh, Siakam and Lowry both being out, he was able to showcase a bit more of what he's capable of doing off the bounce. He's really strong and he's able to take advantage of mismatches when he gets smaller guards put up against him and he's quick enough to be able to get a little bit of space around um, opposing wings and is a good finisher at the rim as well. What he really needs to add in order to take that leap from being a role player to a all-star level guy uh, is that jumper off the dribble that I was talking about before. That's a really important skill to have if you're going to be a high-level scorer, and that's the one thing that he really doesn't have in his bag yet on the offensive end of the floor. But he's also terrific defensively. As I said, he had five steals today, and uh, he got them in a variety of ways. There was one or two where he dug down on Miles Turner in the post and was able to poke the ball away from him. He had a couple where he was jumping passing lanes and using his length to be disruptive in that category. And he also poked the ball away from the guy he was guarding individually as well. So... Um, just a really outstanding game from OG and Anobi. He really stepped it up in the absences of those two star players, and this was a really, really nice game for him. Fred Van Vliet also stepped it up today, finishing with 21 points. He made all four of his three-point attempts, and similar to Ananobi, played great defense, coming away with three steals. He was the man who was largely responsible for Malcolm Brogdon's poor game, as Brogdon was limited to 12 points on 5 for 22 shooting and 1 for 10 from 3, and a lot of that was because of the tenacious defense Van Vliet was playing on him. He was forcing him left and not allowing him to get to that right side of the floor where he's so comfortable. He didn't let Brogdon get into a rhythm, which is a very important aspect of Malcolm's game, as he's much uh, more of a rhythm player than he is uh, just an explosive guy. He uh, wasn't able to get into that rhythm, and that limited how effective he was able to be. So great effort by Van Vliet defensively. He was able to knock down shots on the offensive end, both off the dribble and off catch and shoots. Wasn't terrific inside the paint as he went just 2 for 11 on twos, but did just enough as a shooter and a, uh, turned in a great uh, defensive effort, and that was enough to get the Raptors the win today. Norman Powell was the third 20-point scorer for the Raptors. He did some Norman Powell stuff, uh, slashing, getting to the rim, and throwing down audacious dunks over opposing big men, as he has really grown into. He's one of the more underrated dunkers, in my opinion, and it seems like every time I watch him, he puts somebody on a poster. Today, it was Miles Turner, although there was another time where he tried to put Turner on a poster, and Turner ended up blocking his shot. But... 20 points and 6 rebounds on 7 for 18 shooting is a solid performance from Norman, and they needed that kind of scoring output from him today in order for them to get this win. 
Uh, Chris Boucher was kind of the last guy who stood out a little bit. It wasn't his best game of the season. He wasn't playing at the high level he has in other games so far this year. But you can just tell how valuable he is to this team on the offensive glass and protecting the rim on the other end of the floor. The scoring is what is usually highlighted when people talk about Chris. But that's not where he's most valuable. And as long as he continues to grab boards uh, on the offensive end and contest shots on defense... He's going to be a valuable player for this Raptors team. And I think that uh, if Aaron Baines continues to play this poorly, I guess Boucher is pretty much playing the starters minutes at this point. Although the Raptors did go with some small ball stuff today with uh, Ananobi playing the five and Stanley Johnson playing the four. But uh, I would look for Chris Boucher to continue to have an increased role as he continues to play very well for this Raptors team so far. On the other side of things, when talking about the Pacers, the whole reason why this game was close at all was TJ McConnell. He didn't have a great stat line. Eight points and seven assists on four for seven shooting. But the way he played in this game, the effort and energy he brought off the bench was what kept them in the game and what led them and sparked them on a run in the third quarter that was able to make this a really competitive game down the stretch. McConnell uh, had two steals, one of them leading to a breakaway layup for him in transition, and he also had a few opportunities to beat his guy off the dribble, where he had a couple finishes at the rim and a couple really nice kickouts to the perimeter as well. Just really the energy that he brought off the bench was a key component of the Pacers' comeback in this game as they were down by 15 at one point, I believe, and they were able to make it really, really close, and I give a lot of kudos for TJ McConnell. He's not the most skilled guy in the league, but he always plays hard. He always gives 100% effort, and that is an underrated skill to have um, in the NBA. Miles Turner was the best of the core guys for this Pacers team today as he finished with 25 points on 8 for 12 shooting and also had 6 blocks and 3 steals. Turner, as I've said on multiple occasions, is one of the two favorites for Defensive Player of the Year in this early season, in my mind, along with Rudy Gobert. There are no other players in the league that have the same impact as rim protectors, and that is the most important piece of a defense. It's the centerpiece of the defense, your rim protecting center. And nobody does it as well as Gobert and Turner. What Turner perhaps does a little bit better than Gobert, however, is um, get his hand in passing lanes to poke away steals. Gobert is a great at it as well, but I've noticed it with Turner both in this game and in a game against the Warriors earlier this season that I watched start to finish. He's really able to put a lot of pressure on opposing guards as they drive into the rim, and he's quick enough for covering and has the necessary wingspan to knock away passes that aren't on target. So Turner has a case for Defensive Player of the Year. Today, he was taking advantage of mismatches inside and posting up on some of the smaller guards that got switched on to him, and he also knocked down four of his seven three-point attempts or excuse me, five of his six three-point attempts made four of his seven free throws. Or no, I think I have that backwards. Anyways, um, great game from Turner, and if they would have gotten that same kind of game from their other stars, then this probably would have gone a bit better for the Pacers, but Malcolm Brogdon and Devontis Savonis both really struggled in this game. Uh, they combined for 22 points on six for 32 shooting, and one for 13 from three. Sabonis got to the line eight times, so he was still able to finish with a double-double, putting up 10 points and 19 rebounds, but he really struggled to get anything going offensively. His shots just weren't falling today, and um, that's why this Pacers team wasn't able to succeed. They rely a lot on Brogdon and Sabonis for their offensive output, especially with TJ Warren and uh, I guess now Karis LeVert being out for extended periods of time, and they can't afford to have these guys play this poorly if they want to succeed. I think that a key thing that the Raptors did was they played physical with Sabonis and made him stretch out a little bit to the perimeter where he's not nearly as effective as he is in the post. So a large reason was because of the defense. I already talked about Brogdon and how he was limited by being forced to go left for large periods of the game. So once again, a big credit to the Raptors' defense, but the Pacers needed those two to step it up a little bit more than they did tonight. And I certainly wouldn't be 
one to gamble that this is something that we will see stis, uh, a lack of a, a sustained lack of production from the Pacers All Stars. Um, I think we'll see them bounce back very soon. Uh, last thing I wanted to touch upon here was Jeremy Lamb. This is the first time that I've seen him play after he came back from his torn ACL, and he actually looked really good today. He finished with 13 points on 5 for 9 shooting. He looked really confident taking pull-ups off of the dribble and knocked down, I think, a couple threes and also some stuff in the mid-range as well. And he played some pretty good defense on the other end of the floor against a multitude of the Raptors' wings. So... Um, good to see him back on the court. He is very important to this team as someone who's going to fill in those minutes on the wing in TJ Warren and uh, Levert's absences. So definitely good to have him back on the court for the Pacers. This was a really fun game and I would love to see these two teams face off in a playoff showdown because they have two great coaches and two very balanced offensive attacks. And I just think that it would be very entertaining to see them make adjustments and play out a full series against one another. Especially at full strength as both teams were th without key players in this game. Let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. That's going to be it for me. Ladies and gentlemen, I will see you all again very soon.